we will now take um, sketches that we did on the concept one uh, and uh, assemble them onto the A4 page um, and uh, start the illustration. I'm going to focus on the silhouette. Uh, I'm still going to focus on the on the general sort of outline. Uh, and I'm going to use pen tool uh, to define the first um, the first silhouette, and then turn off the sketch and look at it and think if I like it or not. Um, because by doing this simple approach, uh, I'm not getting into detail yet, and I'm not distracted with the material differences, uh, graphical details, not even wheels yet. Yeah, so let's do that and let's see where we're going to arrive. So I'm zooming into sketch, so I have it uh, pretty much all across, my, uh, all across my screen and I'll start tracing the outline. I think I'm going to put a few uh, also help lines. To, that will help me and guide me with the general construction of that uh, of that object. Yeah. So always creating a layer, <clears throat> and let's start with some lines. And I don't want to destroy too much of that elliptical feeling that uh, the um, that I started with, because it's a very clean, clean sort of shape. So I'll only do a ever so small adjustment to it, so it uh, follows our sketch. Now I'm going to define my background uh, a little bit more. So I'm going to add some gradients to it. So it's not just complete um, sim simple color. So we get a little bit more interest in it. So
So at the moment I'm adding the ellipses for to define my wheels and uh, it's it's pretty much blocking the shape uh, nothing nothing more at the moment I'm not gonna go into detail uh, but also I defined uh, myself a rulers so then I can see where's the sense of that ellipse because I'll need that uh, a little bit later on <clears throat> and uh, so th these are the most fundamental simple shapes uh, that I have that are also very easy to to sort of uh, lay out and now we're gonna we're gonna add the the V shape basically so let's look at that and when I do a path I'm always try to think about um, the structure of how I would be then modeling it for, for example yeah so I'm trying to divide long shapes into logical sort of a primary primary curves that would define that shape and then I'm thinking already about some secondary shape which is like a uh, like a blend between those uh, large ones so when you see me doing those blocks that's the reason for it because this is how probably a modeler also would uh, start thinking about how logically uh, give that shape that twists in all sorts of directions some some structure at the beginning uh, to start with uh, there will be some adjustments that's why I use paths because it's much easier for me to then uh, adjust those shapes uh, rather than if I sketched it then uh, there will be a lot of uh, erasing and it would get dirty very quickly uh, so if you see me now I'm defining I'm defining that shape V shape basically. And I'm using shortcuts for the path tool that gives me an options to to uh, use these anchor points to my advantage uh, and very easily define define those primary curves let's say the fundamental curves that then create the design and I think I'm gonna I'm gonna omit this front piece of the V as I think it would be better if that was sort of hidden behind the wheel uh, so it, we don't have this crazy front overhang. Right. We have one more piece missing here, so let's add that. At the moment I'm just blo blocking that black. Simplifying. Right, so let's have a look on, on the silhouettes. <coughs> and do a little bit of analysis so I think this wheel is way too forward uh, 
and it looks a little bit unstable because this overhangs a bit too much. So what we can do is uh, we can bring that wheel slightly back. And I think we can also reduce the length of that feature because it's, it doesn't need to be so long. And I will experiment bringing this a little bit forward as well. So the overall vehicle would feel a little bit more compact. Yeah. Now we'll need to add some attachment of that wheel to the overall body. So let's for now block it quite simply with this uh, with this rod that is uh, will be pretty much in the in the in the shadow, so we won't see much of it. Okay, let's add a little bit of flow into into our into our V shape. So now I will be adding those secondary curves that are basically bridging between the primary curves. I will start adding the secondary secondary curves between those primary curves that will now nicely blend our shape into the continuous uh, continuous shape for the eye basically. And I'll be also looking at the sketch. Not completely tracing it, uh, because the paths are way more precise, I would say, than, than uh, you know, your hand uh, while sketching. Uh, but trying to, trying to mimic as much as possible from, from, that, uh, from that sketch. With a wide radius, so that means that our primary curves are almost non-existent, uh, but uh, nevertheless they are still there, yeah, uh, and they are giving us a structure for for the whole for the whole overall shape. And the uh, alias guys, uh, they really appreciate if uh, the sketch has this sort of structure because then they don't need to do the thinking sometimes uh, from scratch, yeah, and there is uh, some logic to it. Yeah. Let's have a look again. Yeah, so now it's getting already more organic, <coughs> but I feel like this part can, can be even more, so I will, I will adjust these anchor points towards each other, so then we can, we can have even more flow. Yeah. And at the moment, I'm not worrying too much about the intersection between the sphere and the V-shape, yeah? because that will be trying to do too much at the same time. So now I only worry about the shape from the side, uh, from like if it was a piece, uh, uh, like a thin sheet of paper, yeah, uh, because of course the intersection will change the the way that that uh, that shape actually uh, looks from the side view. Mm -hmm.